Hello there! It's been a while since I've played a LEGO Star Wars game and I'm really digging the Skywalker Saga so far. Recently my love for Star Wars has been reinvigorated by content outside of the movies like the games and the new shows. Even the Galaxy's Edge area at Disney World looks pretty cool, but today we're looking at a different Galaxy's Edge. This is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the official Black Spire Outpost cookbook. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the official Black Spire Outpost cookbook by Chelsea Monroe Castle and Mark Sumerak takes us to the edge of the galaxy to sample some of the finest delicacies in Star Wars. The book is told through the perspective of Strono Tugs, the head chef of Maz Kanata's castle. After Maz's castle blew up, he kept cooking, traveling, and delivering food planet to planet, spaceport to spaceport, until finally he decided to set up shop at the Black Spire outpost on Batu. This cookbook is a collection of the most delicious recipes he's come across in his intergalactic travels. A lot of the recipes draw inspiration from many familiar places for Star Wars fans, places like Jakku, Endor, Dagobah, Mustafar, and of course Tatooine. Tatooine's gotta be in everything. In the recipe descriptions, there are many references to popular Star Wars locales and the many different alien races and creatures that inhabit the galaxy. The cookbook shares the same name as the Star Wars areas of the Disney theme parks, and several recipes are similar to the food and drinks you can get at the park's restaurants, but they're not exactly the same. Each recipe page comes with a photo, ingredients list, and recipe steps, and as well as some flavored text that kind of read like diary entries told from the point of view of Strono. The entries have many references to Star Wars lore, but to be honest, I found them a tad bit lengthy and not particularly interesting. I didn't find Strono's voice to be that engaging, and I felt that the text was just an opportunity to drop Star Wars factoids and references. I can see how some people might enjoy reading those, but it's not for me. On the other hand, I want to really point out that I love how the recipes look like in this cookbook. I think a lot of them are so creative and really feel like they fit the theme of Star Wars. There are a lot of cookbooks out there where the theme just feels loosely tacked on, but this cookbook goes out of its way to make the dishes feel truly alien and otherworldly. They look like they belong on this set of a Star Wars movie. There are a lot of vibrant colors and interesting textures in the food. Even the composition of the photos themselves were given a lot of thought to make them as immersive as possible. The food in the photos are staged along with that rustic, metallic, industrial look to the background and props that kind of make you feel like you're at a junk shop or a scrapyard in Tatooine. I can't wait to dig in, so let's get cooking. I'll be making three dishes from the Star Wars cookbook to get a taste of this galaxy far, far away. First, we're gonna make a traditional dish treasured by the Mandalorians, the spicy Mandalorian stew. This dish might pack a punch, but it's actually super simple. First, heat up two tablespoons of olive oil in a large saucepan over medium heat, then add in a diced up medium yellow onion, two cloves of minced garlic, and a tablespoon of grated ginger. Cook them all together for a couple minutes until they soften, then add in about a pound of roughly chopped up boneless and skinless chicken thighs, fry that up until the chicken is cooked on all sides. Then it's time to add in the rest of the stew's ingredients, which are the following. One cord and diced medium red apple, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, two carrots roughly chopped up. Then the cookbook asked for one purple potato, but unfortunately I couldn't find any at the grocery store, so I just replaced it with a regular yellow potato instead. I think the purple potato is just to add some alien-y color to the dish, but we're still gonna get that potato flavor. Add two teaspoons of garam masala, two tablespoons of curry powder, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of soy sauce, four cups of chicken broth, and a half cup of pearl couscous. Mix everything together and cook it covered for about 30 minutes or until the veggies are soft. I love easy one-pot dishes like these where you just throw everything in. I wish every dish was as simple and easy to make as this one. This is the way. For our main, we're about to eat one of these guys. Rontos are huge four-legged creatures that are popular mounts among the Jawas of Tatooine due to their strength and hardiness. But we're not riding one, we're eating one. Apparently, in the form of Ronto wraps. This is actually a dish that you can find in both the cookbook and the Disney theme park. Although there's a clear difference between the two as the theme park's version looks like a hot dog topped with coleslaw, whereas the book's version is more like ground meat topped with guacamole. 
First, we gotta try to make the wrappers. Mix together three quarter cup of warm water, a tablespoon of olive oil, a teaspoon of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of dry yeast. Mix that all together. Then add in two cloves of minced garlic and a tablespoon of mixed herbs. The cookbook suggested to use something like savory or marjoram. I decided to use a mix of dried savory and a pinch of thyme, rosemary, oregano, basil, basically all the dried green herbs in my pantry. Then gradually add in two cups of all-purpose flour while mixing. When it gets to the point that it's not too sticky, place it on a lightly floured surface and then knead it for a couple of minutes until the dough gets to the point that it bounces back when you poke it. Then place your dough in a bowl and cover it up with plastic wrap or a damp kitchen towel and set it in a warm place for about an hour or when it doubles in size. However, I got some bad news. My dough did not rise and I don't know why. Some possible things I messed up. Maybe the water was too warm, too cold? Did I over knead, under knead? This is why I don't bake, guys. Even though it didn't rise, I still went ahead and tried to cook it. I split it in six parts and rolled them out flat and then pan fried them for three minutes per side. And they look kinda decent, but I'm still concerned. But the show must go on. Let's move on to the meat filling. Now, because the Black Spire Outpost is kinda far from my place, I wasn't able to actually source some Ronto meat, but fortunately the cookbook has a very worthy substitute in pork. In a pan or skillet, heat two tablespoons of vegetable oil over medium heat, then add in half a medium yellow onion diced up and cook that for a few minutes until soft. Add in our Ronto meat substitutes, half pound of ground pork, and six ounces of chorizo sausage meat without the casings. Cook the meat until brown for about five minutes, then add in two tablespoons of brown sugar and 14 ounces of tomato puree and cook that for about 15 minutes until the sauce is thick. Add some salt and pepper to taste, then spoon that on the wrappers. Since I was so worried about messing up the wrappers, I ended up buying some from the grocery store just in case, so it'll be interesting to see the difference. Then top it off with some guacamole. The cookbook didn't have a recipe for that, so I just went with the simple lazy guac of lime juice and avocado mushed together. And I also sprinkled on some red pepper flakes since the photo on the cookbook had some. That's the Ronto wrap. Now to wash it all down, we're gonna need another four-legged behemoth, but this one is a lot hairier. We're gonna need a bantha for our bantha chai. This drink is clearly inspired by the iconic blue milk that Luke drank in A New Hope, so I had to try it. We start off by mixing together in a saucepan two cups of milk with two teaspoons of arrowroot powder. If you don't have any bantha milk, then you can just use regular milk, or soy milk, almond milk, rice milk, or whatever milk you'd like to use. Heat this over medium-low heat, then add in a tea bag of blue butterfly PT, which is gonna give your milk a nice natural blue color. These things are awesome. Add in an inch of ginger in thin slices, a pinch of cardamom, a pinch of mace, and one to two tablespoons of sugar depending on your taste. Of course, I went with two. Whisk it all together and let it steam, then let it steep for another five minutes until you get a nice rich color and a beautiful spicy smell. Remove it from the heat and strain the liquid to enjoy your bantha chai. Finally, it's time to eat. Let's start with a spicy Mandalorian stew. I'm really digging the colors and textures that I'm seeing here and I'm liking the smell of the spices. Everything was cooked perfectly. The root vegetables were nice and soft, almost pillow-like, and the pearl couscous had a nice bite that goes perfectly with the sauce. The curry seasoning felt balanced and not too overpowering, but it's actually milder than I expected. I was expecting it to be spicier, so for me, I think I'll probably add some cayenne pepper for next time to get it to live up to that spicy Mandalorian name. I probably would also add some more apples because I found that it was kind of lost in the dish. Overall though, it's a really solid comforting dish with a really nice mouthfeel courtesy of that pearl couscous. Moving on to our Ronto wraps. Again, we got two versions here, my non-rising dough versus store-bought. Starting off with the one I made, first thing I noticed was the bread ain't too bad. I thought it would be inedibly hard, but the texture is okay and the herbs in it actually smell really good. The ground pork and chorizo mix is deliciously sweet and the tangy creamy guac on top is the perfect match. 
In my head, I'm comparing it to tacos and I keep thinking that it needs more toppings like salsa or onions or cheese, but I wouldn't even add anything else to it. I like the simplicity and it all just works great together. I tried the other version with a store-bought wrap and I actually liked mine more. The store-bought wrap wasn't as flavorful as the one I made, but it was slightly softer, which I like, and it made it easier to fold and eat. But I'm all about those herbs though, so I'm leaning towards homemade. I just have to make it better next time. Blue milk time! Let's drink some Banta chai! Look how cool this is. I love the blue color and the ginger and spice smells intoxicating. I couldn't wait to drink this one and it did not disappoint. It's so warm and soothing, the sweet earthy flavors with a bit of gingery kick is just so comforting. It's like all the midi chlorians in my body are being treated to a nice warm hug while waking up to a pleasant Tatooine sunrise. Beautiful. And I really appreciate the use of butterfly PT here. The book could have just instructed to use food coloring, but I like that it went with a natural option. But on the other hand, Butterfly P is pretty rare and pricey just for coloring purposes, so if you wanted to use blue food coloring instead, I don't blame you. All in all, I'm pretty surprised by the quality of this Star Wars cookbook. I've seen other Star Wars cookbooks in the past and I found those ones to be kind of tacky, but this one is actually super creative and super immersive and really that's all I want in a cookbook. It allows me to cook and eat delicious food while feeling like I'm a part of that universe, so it ticks all my boxes. Final verdict for the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge cookbook, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one.